Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 7.56 a.m. and you are watching Aurora Weather here on Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. As a reminder, Aurora Weather is now compacted into the show. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, you will see Aurora Weather as part of our daily uh, show. Independent Aurora Weather is Tuesdays and Thursdays before Buenos Dias Aurora. So, a lot to talk about today, and we also have a trivia question for you guys that we will debut uh, right after this weather. So, let's talk about what we can expect. Lake effect snow, oh, hold on. Lake effect snow and a brief cold shot with crippling snowfall rates may make travel near impossible in parts of Northwest Indiana. Once again, this weather comes from the National Weather Service of Chicago, delivered to you here on Aurora Weather. Key messages, right up here, okay? An intense band of lake effect snow will oscillate, word of the day, oscillate, between Berrien, LaPorte, and far northeastern Porter counties today. Snow rates of two inches plus per hour and 40 mile per hour wind gusts will lead to dangerous to impossible travel conditions. Dangerous to impossible. If there was ever a resounding vote for not going out, you just heard it. Uh, right here, a very tight gradient in snow expected near Porter County and Ports uh, excuse me, points northeast. Now, what's uncertain? The band may shift east of Porter County this afternoon, but may wobble back late this evening into overnight. And wobble was their word, not mine. I like that. Uh, so next, this is the reason a winter storm watch remains in effect tonight. Uh, now, what you should do right down here, avoid non-emergency travel across northern Porter County. And if you must travel, Stock your car with winter survival supplies. Now, this is what else is important about this. And I'm, it's, it's interesting to see how weather has changed from when I was a youngster into now. Down here, we've got something called whiteout conditions. What's a whiteout condition? Imagine being in your car and you can't see anything. That's a whiteout condition or indeed your home. Next, travel near impossible. And then finally, last indicator here is blocked roads. Now with this map of probability, eight inches of snow or more, 12 inches of snow or more. And right down here, we have our shaded gradient, probability key color, okay? So yellow is low, 10 to 40%, medium, 40 to 70%, and high, 70 plus percent, okay? And then you can see where uh, different parts of Indiana fall into. All right, now this storm is also projected to travel. All right, that's weather one. Next is the forecast, you guys. So here's our four day outlook, all right? Today, this is gonna be an interesting day, taking us into a, uh, a weekend with sun, as you can see, but we'll get there. All right, today, here's what we can expect. Morning snow, six for our low, 19 degrees for our daytime high. Blustery conditions, heavy lake effect snow as well. Ending for most of the day, probably around one o'clock p.m. Tonight, there's a 100% chance of snow for lake effect north, uh, northeastern Porter County. Negative 10 degrees is expected tonight. Six degrees will be the high, six degrees. Now, don't forget about the wind chill. Wind chill today will be negative 15, excuse me, zero to negative 15 degrees. And then tonight, negative five to negative 25 degrees. Extremely cold tonight. Now, Going into tomorrow, Saturday, 17 degrees for the daytime high. The daytime low will be 8 degrees. We can expect a day of mostly sun, a little bit of clouds tomorrow. Wind chill, it'll feel like 0 to negative uh, 15 degrees. Saturday night, a clear night. Uh, nighttime high of 1 degree. Nighttime low of negative 14. Still very cold at night. With the wind chill, we're looking at negative 10 to negative 20 degree temperatures at night. That brings us into a decent Sunday, uh, relatively speaking, 21 degrees for the daytime high on Sunday, 16 degrees for the daytime low on Sunday. Sunshine expected for most of the day Sunday, uh, a little bit of cloud cover as well. Now, look at our wind chill. Our wind chills are still cold, but in the slight positive, uh, five degree to negative 15 degree wind chills on Sunday. So we'll definitely feel that burr Sunday night. 17 degrees for the nighttime high, 14 degrees for the nighttime low. Wind chill of 10 degrees back down to zero on Sunday night. Now, as we get into next week on Monday, 30 to 50% chance of rain. However, what do we notice? 
from Sunday night into Monday morning, our wind chill index has dropped. So we can expect to not have those dangerously cold um, wind chill temperatures and blowing. A wintry mix of snow, hold up, right there. A wintry mix of snow developing during the afternoon, 34 degrees for the daytime high, 31 degrees for the daytime low, taking us into Monday night with a icy mix, a wintry mix, 32 degrees for the nighttime high, 29 degrees for the nighttime low on Monday night. Additional details. Now, the National Weather Service of Chicago is monitoring a potential for freezing rain, mainly Monday night into Tuesday. Also, while air temperatures will gradually warm, ground temperatures may lag, leading to icing on road surfaces. Now, we've talked about this before. What's the number one surface that gets icy first? Bridges. They're elevated, right? A lot of them have water going underneath, thus compounding the freezing. Let's recap. Today, 19 degrees for the daytime high. Low of six degrees for the daytime low today. Tomorrow, Saturday, 17 degrees for the daytime high. Eight degrees for the daytime low. Sunday, 21 degrees for the daytime high. 16 degrees for the daytime low. And Monday of next week, 34 degrees for the daytime high. 31 degrees for the daytime low. A mix of um, wintry conditions, ice, snow, rain, thunder, lightning. Very, very frightening, 30 to 50%. That is the weather for today. Now, something to talk about. Last week, we did trivia. It was really cool. But the problem with the trivia that we discovered was that when you guys are putting the answers in the chat, they don't always come up in the order that the person typed it and then pushed it. So we have a Google Voice number. Now, our Google Voice number is 331-256-7782. That number again, 331-256-7782. Going forward, when we do trivia questions, we're gonna do it like the old school radio show. First person to text is the winner. Google will not mess up who actually responds to us first. So 331-256-7782 is our Google voice number. Today's trivia question is, ooh, <laughs> who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? If you win this question, you can come do the weather. That is the uh, prize for today. Who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? Once again, that Google Voice number is 331-256-7782. The first person to win, uh, first person to text the correct answer will win. We will debut the answer after the news portion. Get ready for a great show. <laughs>
Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8.06 a.m. and you are watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. We have a great show for you today. We have a great returning guest uh, and segment. Our guest today is the uh, president of the Aurora Regional Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Tony Rivera, how you feeling? I'm great. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you again. Good nice, to see you again. Nice to see you too. We have a lot to talk about today, sir. A lot to talk about. But before we get into everything, how are you feeling today? How do you feel? I'm feeling good. Like okay. next week, we're going to be above zero, above freezing, at least I should say. And, yes. And so that seems like a heat wave. So I'm looking forward to uh, some of the snow going away. Absolutely. <laughs> I saw the temperatures of 19 degrees. I went and bought charcoal to get ready to start grilling. So, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, good morning to all of you guys. Zor Zapata, good morning. Juan Cayetano, Daniel Calderon, Tracy Duran. Good morning. Be careful out there with the weather. So a lot of things have happened. Uh, since the last time that we sat down. I want to remind folks that you have a regular and ongoing presence on our show, as well as Buenos Dias, Aurora. Uh, we're going to be talking about the updates that the Chamber of Commerce has had and is making. Um, first things first, you guys got a new website and new um, new things taking place. Well, we're getting it, right? Okay. So within the next 60 uh, to 90 days, we're going to be transitioning into a, a new system that's much more user-friendly. Uh, along with that, we're going to have a website that's easier to navigate uh, so you can go take a look at our events, uh, sign up and register for them. Uh, also, we're putting out a lot of content uh, for government grants, government loans, programs that we're running uh, for educational programs, what we're doing within the community. Uh, so we're really excited. Uh, it's going to it's gonna be ch challenging because anytime you do data migration or any type oh, yeah. of uh, change, it's never fun, but it's gonna be really worth it for our members. So we, we took a lot of time into uh, understanding which was our best uh, option, and, and I think uh, the community is gonna be happy. Okay, all right, wonderful. Uh, now, also, uh, there's the In the Know series as yeah. well, which is going on, and that's an ongoing series. Correct. So the In the Know series, and um, we had our first one. Okay. Uh, uh, Jen Mendoza and Karen Putman from our team uh, put that together, and they did a great job okay. uh, talking about some of the things that are going to happen and going on with the chamber this year, some of the changes on, on the website, uh, how you register, how do you do that, giving them contact information for people on there. Our next series, and each month that we do this, we're going to have a different topic that's relevant to our business communities. So um, if you have any ideas, or we're going to put out a survey to our members on what they would like to learn about and mm -hmm. what we can put together for them so when they come in you know we're answering the most pressing questions of our business community as well as our community as a whole okay all right seems like you guys have been doing a uh, a really good job of reflecting what's happening so far though i mean and the things that i have seen i mean i'm seeing community mixed you know actually taking part and coming yeah, out yeah absolutely so the way we look at everything it's uh three three phases right our for our first uh thing that we look at is what do our members want how can we take care of our members they're the backbone of the chamber and what we want to do the second thing um, I look at is how can I take care of my employees to provide that service for the chamber? And the last thing is how do we tie all that in into making our community a better place to live? And what can we do to help all the services and the wonderful people in our community? Okay. All right. And how um, how frequently are those happening in the nose? The in the nose, it's uh, once, once a month, and I believe it is the second or third Tuesday of the month. Okay. Yeah second or third Tuesday of the month. Uh, so we'll be happy to continue sharing that. For those of you who have LinkedIn, go ahead, if you're on LinkedIn, and follow the Aurora Regional Chamber of Commerce. Also follow them on Facebook and Instagram as well. LinkedIn's a great place to stay connected and find out all the things the Chamber's doing, and all of their events are also on there as well. Uh, the time is 8, 10 a.m. You are watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Good morning to Ray Dehan Paz. Hope I got that right. And Saul Olivas, good morning. And hello to the uh, Cayetano family. Good morning, Renata. Sending you a hug for the chilly weekend, and God bless you. God bless you, too. We appreciate that very much. Okay. Now, there's two things that I've noticed with the chamber. In addition to, like, responding to um, what the business community is asking about and talking about, the chamber also has many benefits for its members. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things that you guys have also is the business after 
hours. Yes. That is a great networking event, but more than that. Yeah, so so the business after hours is a networking event, but it's also to get to know your business community and and the people in it. Uh, we're going to have our first one at Black Pepper Lounge, so okay. we're very excited. That's coming up uh, Thursday, I believe it's twenty fifth. Um, we're we're um, we're hosting that event uh, with Black Pepper Lounge and. And it's to go out there and talk to other individuals that are members of the chamber, again, for networking. But getting to know the owners, uh, getting to know the people that run the businesses here and employ people here in, in the community is, is, is wonderful. Right, right. Um, now, what's the um, – it's at 5.30 p.m. Yes. Okay. Uh, registration is required for that. So go ahead to, the again, the chamber's Facebook page if you're interested in that. Hit the link, check it out, and definitely sign up for that. Correct, and uh, fa- and you can do it through the Facebook page or just go to the Chamber website at www.aurorachamber.com. Okay, all right. Now we're going to talk about. So there's uh, there's double the coffee here to talk about, but I think the the first thing we'll talk about is your cafe con. Tony, which yeah. just recently started. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, there's two events. There's coffee and tea with Tony and, and cafe and te with Tony. So there's that's an right. English version and a Spanish version. And basically, that's just an open forum and an open discussion um, that I'm going to host once a month. Um, come have some coffee with us, have some tea with us. I usually have pastries because I like cookies. Um, All and, right. and we just have. I'm a, sold. I'm there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we have a, a, an open discussion trying to you know hear what um, what community members want to know from me and what we're doing with the chamber as well as you know bring up uh, great experiences they had you know that this last week miss Jana uh, was there uh, from miss Janice candy and she brought up some great concerns that she had that uh, that happened around the holiday times and and that's really what it is and and from those discussions we either can create a policy forum where other business owners that have the same type of issues mm-hmm. or problems or props can come in and talk to each other or grow, or we can figure out, you know, what type of advocacy we need to be focused on for our community. So it's really just an event that we're going to have where we can interact with our community and understand um, what their thoughts are and, and just have an open discussion. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now, how often are those? Uh, that's you? once a month. So once, once a, month? a month I do it in English, uh, with the, which is the coffee and tea with Tony, and once a month I do it in Spanish, which is the cafe y te with con Tony. Okay. Uh, now, both of those take place at the chamber offices, which are downtown Correct. here, right? Yeah, the chamber offices at 43 West Galena. And, again, you can find those on our social media pages as well as through the Chamber website. That is open to everybody. So even if you're not a member and you're interested in becoming a member of the Chamber, please come into those and and, and have an open discussion with us uh, for, for those events. Okay. You mentioned two members of the team. You mentioned... Uh Jen and Karen. Uh, who else is part of the uh, team? Let's 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 shout out the team. Yeah, our, t- you know, I've uh, been here for three months, and we've done a great job putting together a solid foundation of work moving on. And really, it's uh, it's been a team effort. I have a wonderful team that I get to work with. So we again, we had Jen Mendoza, Karen Putman, Bill, Dr. Bill Marzano, mm-hmm. D. Basile, and Fran uh, Weibel are, 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 are what uh, make up the team. And uh, they're fantastic people, a, a, a great uh, team to work with. Okay. All right. And in the three months time, oh, sorry, I, met, nope. I missed the, our office manager, Gwen Watkins. Sorry. All right. And she's the one that really does everything right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, she, the day I came over yeah. there, she got me squared away. Yeah, <laughs> she does. She does. She, she, and, and so I, I don't know how I could forget about when she, since she runs everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, it's, it, the team that you have over there is is really good. Um, now, for those again, you mentioned it's forty three West Galena. That is the um, convention. Well, it's not a convention. It's it's the parking underneath the parking deck, but it's on Galena. Correct. Uh, right across the street from Wabanzi Community College. Correct. It's right across from Wabanzi Community College. We're right next to the river on the first bridge you cross over from River Road towards Broadway, just on the north side of the street. Um, you'll see us there. We have a uh, um, you know, it's not as visible as, as we'd like mm-hmm. always, but yeah, so, so we're there. Um, we're open from 
basically 8.30 to 5 o'clock every day, someone should be there. Okay, awesome, awesome stuff. 8.16 is the time you're watching and listening to Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Our guest today is Mr. Tony Rivera, president of the Aurora Regional Chamber of Commerce. If you want to become a member of the chamber, follow them on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all the places, LinkedIn, and like and uh, follow the page. Uh, good morning, Saul Olivas. How are you doing, Curtis? You know what? That's really deep right now, so uh, we don't got enough time for that. We have an interview, but I feel good, Saul. Well, thank you for asking. I feel good. Yesterday, yesterday helped. If you watched the show yesterday, and I know you did, Saul. I'm all right, man. Thanks for checking. All right, time is eight seventeen. Now, loaves and fishes. Let's yes. talk about loaves and fishes. You recently went on a tour, a collaborative business tour. Was that is that a good way to put it? Yeah, it was. So. Um, I like to get out and uh, meet different members of our community. So if you're a member, I'll more than likely be stopping at your um, at your facility uh, here or there from time to time. Uh, and so Loaves and Fishes was one that uh, we met, uh, and uh, I wanted to go out there, and I was amazed uh, at the great job they're doing there. Uh, they have an amazing supply chain, and they do an amazing job for our community. Um, I was shocked when they told me that uh, they feed nearly 170,000 families in Aurora wow. last year. Um, it was in the hundred, high 160s, but I don't know the exact number. But I was, I was, uh, I was floored, and then I, I got to see their operations and their processing centers, and they feed a lot more people around the other communities as well. But uh, the team over there, um, Mike, Nancy, and Eric, that took me around was was amazing. Um, and uh and and they're great and one of the fortunate things is you know we've we've asked them to nominate someone for our board from their organization so right. hopefully we'll get someone on there and, and approved i think they have a lot to add to our organization as um, as we move forward okay okay uh yeah loaves and fishes is doing a lot of great work in the city of aurora um they have two locations there's the uh, aurora one and um uh, Naperville, correct, is the is the second location. The Aurora location is on. Oh boy, is that Jefferson Avenue? Uh, you know, it's across from the uh, Feed My Starving Children, like Caddy Corner to right. that that industrial park. Uh, yeah, that right industrial there. park right there. I don't remember the exact name of the street, but uh, but everybody goes to Feed My Starving Children as well, which is yes. another great organization here. So uh, yeah, it's not far from the mall, uh, and uh, and and it's. Uh, it's easy to get to so if you you know it's in the north um northwest uh corner of where the mall is maybe two minutes away so it's it, it's great they they do take a lot of volunteers and so one of the amazing things is just collaborating with the community to go in there and help um and that's just you you walk in there the people are dedicated they're they're hard working and and uh like I said, how they run their operations, and I come from a background in manufacturing and supply chain. Mm -hmm. I was completely impressed on how they were doing everything. They're also extremely sustainable. Right. So um, all their pallets get recycled, all their cardboard gets recycled. So they're uh, a very uh, sustainable organization as well. Good, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, so um, Loaves and Fishes is doing good, good news and good things. You guys have seen their news here on our program and both programs actually our sister program Buenos Dias Aurora as well so every good thing that they have going on we're happy to share it with you guys time is 8 20. Um, now what we talked about with Cafe y, uh, Cafe y Té mm -hmm. con Tony um, I think that was different than Coffee and Connections Correct. which is a separate initiative with yeah. the city of Aurora so a lot of coffee going on and you know what let's 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 do this. Do like coffee cheers. Just cheers it up yeah we love coffee. So <clears throat> the Coffee and Connections is another networking event. Okay. So, you know, we, we do the business after hours for people that can get out after work and, and do that. But we also do a morning one each month, which is Coffee and Connections. And that, again, is for you to get to know some of your local businesses. We're super excited. Unfortunately, it was supposed to happen uh, two weeks ago, but with the snowstorm, we had to move it back to uh, the 23rd. Next Tuesday yeah. is going to be at All Pets Wellness Center. Okay. And that place is amazing. So if you're an animal lover, you definitely need to go to All Pets and check them out. 
They have great treatment options for your pets. Uh, they, they do a combination of regular and holistic veterinary medicine to make your pets feel great. All right. They also have a, a great um, pet sitting facility, like a doggy daycare. It, this place is huge. It's like this massive building, and, and you walk in it, and it's like a, a, a fun zone for pets. So nice. It's, 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 it's a great new concept. Uh, the owners there want to take this um, national, so this okay. is their first um, first place, and they think this concept is going to blow up, and here we get the luck of having them in, in Aurora. Good stuff. Uh, so in the time that you have been um, uh, president of the chamber, what's like two or three key key things that you've noticed about the business community in Aurora overall and as a whole? What are the, you know, key, key, uh, three key maybe indicators or facts or? Yeah, so he, I had this revelation maybe like a week ago, right? I was looking at all the different businesses and all the different communities here in Aurora, and it's an amazing place. I mean, you have the most diverse population in in any centralized area pretty much outside of any large city in 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 the world right right we have every every socioeconomic background you can think of here in aurora we have pretty much any ethnic population that you can think of in aurora and and that's a great place to start a business because if your business can succeed here with the multitude of of diversity then you should be able to be successful pretty much anywhere right and so that that's the number one thing i've noticed about our business community um the other thing is they are very welcoming they're they're i I've I've gotten nothing but love since I started here, and mm-hmm. and that's like been my driving force when I come into work every day. I'm pretty much happy every day because I know I'm going to get to meet and greet and talk to um, amazing people on a daily basis, mm-hmm. and that that that's worth a lot to me. And if I can have an impact on their lives, then 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 uh, it, it's even better. Good, very well said. Yeah, I think um, you know I've. I've seen the change and transformation too uh, in my time living here and working here in Aurora. I mean, things have just expanded and grown a whole lot. Uh, mm-hmm. So much so that if I wasn't doing the news every single day, it'd be hard to keep up with it. Uh, but I've seen a lot with the with the chamber too. I mean, you guys are just rapid firing with the, with the different things, the initiatives. I see our friends who watch the show, the Rainies, for example, and other people taking part, clicking the links, and going to the to the things and that's a good yeah. thing yeah that, that's been a great thing and yesterday i had a meeting with all the members of uh, pathways to prosperity so pathways to prosperity is eight different school districts uh in the area so not just aurora and north aurora but uh, batavia oswego montgomery yorkville uh, those other uh, school districts, as well as Northern Illinois, um, Aurora University, Wabanzi, um, all those uh, institutions are working on creating um, opportunities for young people. And so whether it's in the trades, whether it's through IT um, or, or nursing or healthcare, um, we're, we're starting to work with kids in the middle schools and then moving it up through high schools uh, to create that great workforce. So if you're going to have amazing business development, you're going to go out there and have an economic development plan. The foundation, and we're creating this as the foundation for the chamber, is that workforce. And right. so we're, we're, we're better to start than, than with, with our, our youth. Right, right, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, the iron is hot to start introducing... Um, young people to those to those basic business principles those mm-hmm. professional principles and start getting them acclimated to be the uh the next generation of business owners and mm-hmm. and what have you in our community yeah absolutely uh, times 825 now before we go um the executive speaker series tell us about that yeah so this year we want to have an ex- we're having an executive speaker series it's going to start in november we're firming up dates um, we're working with Wabanzi to host the event because it's going to be larger than we expected. Mm-hmm. And our first uh, speaker is going to be Alvaro Banta. He was the vice president of franchising at McDonald's. So if you want to learn how to grow your business, expand your business, open up various locations, um, I don't think 
um, anyone's better in the world to talk to right. about that <laughs> than, than the guy who led McDonald's efforts uh, in that. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, now, when does that begin? That's going to be at the end of February. We're uh, firming up the dates with Obanzi based on the availability of their auditoriums. All right. Very cool. Um, Things are happening so large and so grand that we need new locations to do it in. How about that? We, new, we need the we need the whole auditorium of Obanzi to do this. Yeah, well, you know, it's not the it's not the that we're we're so grand that we're doing this, but it's important to have those college partnerships, right? Sure. And so we've uh, created partnerships with all our, our higher education institutions: Wabonzi College of DuPage, Aurora University, and. Um, and what we want to do there is make sure that we're partnering with that uh, those those um, individual organizations, mm -hmm. because the business community has to tie back into them. Right? right? How are you going to get your employees? How are you going to get your next entrepreneurs? What can we do? What can the chamber do to support that? And um, also having that discussion with um, faculty members of the college and and the students to be able to ask or have access. To these high um, high uh, profile executives right. uh, that we have, so you know, for a kid, you don't know who's going to inspire them, right? So, True. so, so the someone here that we have in our executive spirit could be inspired because you know Alvaro was an immig he started out in Uruguay um, McDonald's, just wow. just entry level, and he worked all his his way up up to here. Wow. So he. Um, you know, I don't want to tell his whole story, but yeah, he started out in the first McDonald's ever put in Uruguay and worked his way all the way up to the U.S. and running uh, part of their corporate headquarters. And so those are inspiring stories, not just from, um, you know, your business trying to grow it and things like that, but also empowering if you're a, a young immigrant from somewhere saying, hey, this guy made it. He started from right. from somewhere. I can do that as well. Absolutely. Uh, time is 8.28 a.m. You were listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. This was a fantastic second uh, installment and segment with uh, Mr. Tony Rivera, president of the Aurora Regional Chamber of Commerce. He is going to be back here third Fridays, right? Third Fridays. Third Friday every single month. Once again, if you're interested in becoming a member of the Chamber of Commerce, you want to know how to get involved, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Become a member today. There are great benefits that you just heard about. We'll also be sure to connect that information as we go. Now we're going to go to a commercial. And as we told you, at the end of the commercial, uh, excuse me, after the news, at the end of the commercial, we're going to debut the answer for today's trivia question. Don't go away. Imagine what's possible when a city makes an unprecedented investment, a commitment that reshapes a city's landscape forever, that equalizes economic opportunity, elevates education for all, empowers businesses, inspires collaboration between institutions, improves public services, and enhances the lives of every resident. Now, imagine that city is ours. We know it's possible because other cities have done it. Places like Longmont, Colorado, a community that leveraged its investment in municipal electricity and upgraded its substations to create a 17-mile fiber loop delivering critical connectivity to the city's institutions, organizations, and small businesses, achieving an incredibly high adoption rate. And in Far Texas, a border town of 80,000 voted the least connected city in America, invested in 700 miles of fiber, delivering broadband managed services that are enriching residents' lives. Cities, towns, and regions are stepping up all over America. There is no question that Aurora can and deserves to be America's next great smart city. But it's up to us. We have a responsibility we can't ignore to see everyone living in our city, regardless of economic status, having broadband services that are simple, efficient, safe, and powerful. Imagine children having safe internet access anywhere. 
never needing to connect outside of a fast food restaurant. Imagine every building in every neighborhood and retail outlet, new and old, modernized, intuitive, secure. Imagine exciting subscribers with the ultimate broadband experience and giving parents control over all of it. Imagine deploying cyberbullying protection that notifies parents throughout Aurora that their kids are being bullied and providing resources to protect them. Imagine a city with first responders seamlessly connected and with safer public spaces. Can you see this smart city? Can you see our future? We do. Aurora is ready for world-class connection that serves our residents, that helps businesses grow and unifies our community. Let's take this opportunity to give all of our residents, businesses, and community organizations the advantages that come with unrivaled broadband infrastructure and services. Let's come together and deliver a world where digital equity creates a city that is smarter, safer, and sustainable for generations to come. All right, we're back. Time is 8.32 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Uh, we had Tony Rivera, president of the Aurora Regional Chamber of Commerce, on for our uh, start off guests today. Um, great stuff is happening with the chamber, so please be aware of what's going on and get ready to see more great chamber news here on the show. And also our sister program, Buenos Dias Aurora airs uh, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. All right, we got um, news to talk about. A lot of stuff going on. I got a whole stack. Y'all see this? Thick. Curtis, is that cardboard? Not exactly. We got a lot to talk about today. And then we've got the uh, we've got the uh, trivia question too. All right. Uh, now I did get a text. Once again, our number is 331-256-7782. Did get a text about the trivia question. We're going to check that out in a minute. So uh, first things first, on the screen, the city of Aurora has the affordable housing study going on. This is a very, very important survey, uh, which is live right now, and it remains live until February 23rd. Okay, please fill this out. It is very important. Um, now, let me read what's going on here. Discussion topics are home ownership, rental housing, future housing needs, housing development, housing rehabilitation as well. The city of Aurora is currently developing an affordable housing strategy. Policies and priorities outlined in the plan will shape Aurora's approach to affordable housing preservation and expansion over the next 10 years. They're seeking your input to complete the plan. Once again, the QR code is on this flyer. We've shared this flyer a bunch of times and the adjoining link. Please fill it out when you have some time. All right. Don't forget, if you're planning to go to college next year, scholarships are available and online. The application is live and running until January 31st of this month, so it's ending very soon. Visit cffrv.org to start the application. Our friends of the Community Foundation of Fox River Valley do a whole lot here in the community to help out young people, not just young people, but also uh, individuals as well. For more information, you can call them at 630-896-7800. All right, moving right along. Time is 8.34 a.m. Telehealth. Our friends of Ellie Mental Health have telehealth open. The physical space might not be ready, but the therapists are ready to go with no wait list. 630-394-1379 is the number that you need. You can scan the QR code also at the bottom of the uh, flyer here. The virtual services include individual therapy, couples counseling, Family therapy. Different types of insurances are accepted as well. 1315 North Highland Avenue, suite number 202 is the location. Okay. Next, DACA. Spanky D, good morning to you, dear brother. Tuning in. Uh, DACA, there's a World Relief DACA workshop to renew your DACA coming up. Uh, today, it's going to be at the DuPage office and the Aurora office. All right. Make an appointment. You're allowed to renew your DACA 150 to 120 days prior to the expiration date. Uh, 
The DuPage office is located at 191 South Gary Avenue, Aurora Office 73 South LaSalle Street here in Aurora. Okay. Now, remember to bring the following. Your work permit, even if it's expired, social security card, driver's license or state ID, and certified court dispositions from any arrests. You'll need to pay a $15 fi uh, fee to World Relief at the renewal appointment. For, uh, to, for more information, you can call 630-462. 7660, that's the uh, DuPage office, or 630-906-9546, that's the Aurora office. For our Chicago viewers, 773-583-9191 is the number that you need. All right. Coming up Saturday, or no, Sunday, um, Quince Expo, our dear friend Raquel Orta, Rachel's Decorations is presenting the Quince Expo. Entrance is free. Live music and DJs, limousines, photo and video, and a whole lot more. This is going to take place at La Sierra on uh, 2121 East New York Street here in Aurora. Um, the event is from 1 to 5 p.m. Rachel or, or excuse me, Raquel Orta is a dear friend. Um, Rachel's Decorations is a fantastic uh, business here in town. You can call Raquel at 630-707-9299 for more information and for vendor opportunities. The time is 837 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. All right. Next up, Mindful-Based Cancer Recovery, the six-week virtual group, um, begins uh, January 22nd, Monday the 22nd, and goes until February 26th. Patients receiving cancer care at Rush are eligible as well as patients receiving support at Waterford Place Cancer Resource Center. Um, so it's going to be virtual. Visual, uh, video visits are through the Rush My Chart app, Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m., January 22nd to February 26th. Once again, um, the program is offered at no cost. Registration is limited to 12 participants per group. Learn about mindfulness and relaxation practices to improve how your mind and body cope with stress during cancer treatment and survivorship. Wonderful. All right. Moving right along. Claudia Lopez, good morning to you as well. Good to see you guys. Garcia Garcia, good morning to you as well. Okay, our, our friends of the Neighbor Project and the home buying team are presenting the first time home buyer seminar. If you're interested in buying your first home, the seminar presented by the Neighbor Project and many great sponsors will provide you with all the information that you need. Uh, this begins uh, 6 p.m. on the 24th, which is Tuesday of next week, I believe. Uh, now, it's going to be at Everlasting Word Church, 22 North Highland Avenue. For more information, you can call 630-906-9400. That number again is 630-906-9400. And actually, the 24th is Wednesday of next week, 6 p.m. All right, moving right along. We're doing good this morning. we got a lot of news, man. A lot of news, a lot of news, a lot of news. All right. Citizen Workshop, the Citizenship Workshop. So if you are interested in becoming an American citizen, this workshop is going to be Friday the 26th. Two locations, World Relief DuPage, 191 South Gary Avenue in Carroll Stream, and World Relief Aurora right here downtown on LaSalle Street, 73 South LaSalle Street. Call one of the offices to make an appointment to apply for citizenship. You must be 18 years old, a lawful permanent resident for five years, or three years if you're married to a U.S. citizen. Remember to uh, prepare by bringing the following state ID, social security card or green card, international travel history for the past five years, family information and certified court dispositions. Um, there is a $50 fee for filing with World Relief at the time of the appointment. Um, once again, if you're here in Aurora, 630-906-9546 is your number. If you're in DuPage County, 630-462-7660 is your number in Chicago. 773-583-9191. All right. Next up for the veterans. Veteran Resource Fair in Town Hall. We've been telling you guys about this because we support all veteran-owned businesses and veterans here in Aurora. And as a real quick, you know what? Shout out to Cotton Seed Creative Exchange, female veteran-owned business here in town. Friday, February 2nd, this two-party event is going to be broken up with a resource fair and business showcase, and also a town hall with VA veteran administration officials. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is the business showcase, and the town hall is 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
This is going to take place at VFW Post 1197645 South River Street here, uh, not here, but uh, in Batavia. Join the Veteran Resource Fair where there will be over 40 organizations providing resources for the veterans community. And also check out the showcase of local veteran owned businesses. Uh, free lunch is also provided to those who register. Registration link has been shared on our Facebook page and social media. When you see that, click it and come on out for this event. Or you can call 630-232-5942. The number again, 630-232-5942. All right. Moving right along, a legacy of excellence. Celebrate Black History Month at the Fox Valley Mall. Join as we connect our communities through a celebration of history, culture, and achievements. Spoken word, dancers, a fashion show, a DJ, and a whole lot more. This is going to take place at Fox Valley Mall, 195 Fox Valley Center. It'll be February 10th from noon to 4 p.m. Great and innovating sponsors like Make That Trail Face, Mr. Martro Webb, Banana Pudding Twist, Drawing Day Creations, DDC, and ABAN Advantage Consulting. Be ready. All right. And the last piece of news that we have for you guys today is the movie night, the youth movie night for Fresh Start City Church. Fresh Start City Church, located at 10 South Lancaster Avenue, is hosting this. It'll be March 2nd. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. The movie starts at 6.30 p.m. They'll be providing food and beverages as well. Um, once again, if you're interested, for more information, you can call 331-454-1855. The number again, 331-454-1855. Fresh Start City Church is a uh, welcoming church, a safe place where you can come as you are, located on the corner of Galena and Lancaster here on Aurora's west side. Also, Pastor Jose Torres has a monthly uh, program with us every third Wednesday called Encouraging Echoes, where he comes on the show and shares uh, some of the word of God with us and also uh, talks to you, the folks. So that is the news for today. Uh, a great amount of news, a whole lot going on and so many things happening uh, here in the city of Aurora. Now, Let's do the trivia question. So the question for today was, who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize? And our Google Voice number is 331-256-7782. And once again, when you get that answer, you send that to us, you text us, and we got a text. So let me see, let me see who the very first text was. The very first text. We got a text, and holy cow, we got the right answer. The answer is Marie Curie. Yes, uh, Marie Curie was the very first woman to win a Nobel Prize, and the um, our winner is Daniel C. Shout out Daniel C. He won. He is going to come in and do the weather. He was the very first person to text, and he got the answer correct. Now, Marie Curie. For those who don't know, um, is a very interesting lady. So let's let's read a little bit about Marie Curie, you guys. Um, all right, Marie Curie was um, she was a naturalized French physicist and chemist, um, and she was also the first person to win a Nobel Prize, first woman, the first person to win a Nobel Prize twice. And the only person to win a Nobel Prize in two scientific fields. Once again, the first woman to win a Nobel Prize was Marie Curie. That is a fantastic achievement. And not only that, I love the trivia question. It actually went really good. A whole lot better than putting it in the chat, right? That was very efficient. So Daniel C. is the person who won. Not only did he text us the correct answer, he also sent us a screenshot as well. Daniel C., we will be contacting you and communicating with you through the Google Voice app, we can text uh, to you and we'll set up a date for you to come in and do the weather here with us on Good Morning Aurora. The time is 8.45 a.m. All right, a um, couple things before we get out of here. I do have one more piece of very important information for you guys. So our friends of Yellow Bird Books, okay? Yellow Bird Books is um, a local bookstore here in Aurora, they're on Stolp Avenue. Um, they're brand new. We interviewed the team of Yellow Bird Books and they're doing amazing things there. Aurora needs or needed a bookstore here in downtown. They're in a great location. Now, they have a cool thing happening called Macabre Madness. It's going to be tonight um, from 7 to 9 p.m. at 34 South Stolp Avenue. 
after our shopping by candlelight on Edgar Allan Poe's 215th birthday. That's happening tonight. So if you like the macabre, you're going to enjoy this. Special art prints by local artists, Ed, uh, Edgar Award books, sweet treats, and macabre merchandise. Um, the after party for tonight is going to take place at French 75 Gallery and Lounge, um, 56 East Galena at 9.30 p.m. Now, the dress code for tonight is black. Oh, y'all like that, right? I like it too. The dress code for tonight is black. Once again, it's going to take place from 7 to 9 p.m. Macabre Madness. After hour shopping by candlelight tonight, 34 South Stope Avenue, 7 to 9 p.m. Don't forget, come on out there. The after party is at French 75. All right, time is 8.46 a.m. Well, it's time to wrap it up. Here's the thing. Before we get out of here, uh, I hope that you guys have a, a safe the weekend uh i really do and also i want to say thank you guys very much for tuning into the show for watching the show supporting the show and uh following the show we've got some interesting stuff taking place uh next month and in march big things are going to be happening in march uh, excuse me february and march um there's a couple new businesses that are uh, going to be opening up here in town uh, and Aurora proper, actually. We're going to be happy to debut those. But there's a couple other personal stories that have happened here in Aurora um, over the past couple of weeks. Those personal stories we want to dig into, and we're going to share those with you guys here on Good Morning Aurora. So the show's taken on a couple of different, couple different avenues. Um, there's a lot of people who reach out to the show, and they're interested in talking about something or sharing experience, but they they are reluctant to come on to the show and do it um, on camera and everything. And I get it. Also, sometimes the time doesn't work out. People work during the daytime, so they can't come onto the regular morning show from eight to nine. And we understand that. So what we've done is we've, we've, taken, it upon, um, um, we've taken it upon ourselves to go out there to those people, meet them, and capture their story where we find them. And... Um, you know, when you do that, you allow for people to share with you where they feel comfortable. And that means a lot because not everybody is able to get up in the morning, come and bear their soul um, in front of everybody. So, you know, for those who haven't, we've we understand we hear you and we're going to come where you're at and uh, capture your story and, and share that to the world. All right. Time's 848 a.m. I hope that you guys have a great fantastic rest of the weekend man thank you guys for watching good morning aurora will return on monday with more news uh more weather and the very best of aurora and also the trivia question is going to be ongoing our prizes are going to um going to get even cooler and more robust so thank you guys for watching have a great weekend take care of yourself and each other Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m.